Hi, welcome, welcome, welcome. Hi. Um, well, welcome back to a fantastic chemistry podcast. My name is Pete. I'm your host. Tuski is my co-host, and we are hoping uh, we hope that we are uh, having an amazing day. Um, so, chapter fourteen. Two more chapters to go, and we're done. Right, chapter fourteen and fifteen. And uh, well, so chapter fourteen gonna be uh, talk about electrochemistry. So, uh, generating um, electricity from a chemical reaction. Right. But before we get into the detail, we can not mention this. So the sponsor who make this podcast possible, Ketchup Heinz Ketchup. Hey, life's better with Heinz Ketchup. <laughs> um, uh, do you guys like ketchup? Yeah, ketchup on fries, on burgers, on onion rings, uh, on eggs, on pizza, <laughs> on everything. You probably think that's gross. Ketchup on sushi? No, don't please don't do that. Don't ruin the sushi. Um, well, a little bit about history. So, uh, uh, Heinz tomato ketchup is probably the most uh, popular ketchup in our country. And um, so, Henry John Heinz, that's his name, he's the founder. So, his company is called uh, is called H J Heinz Company as part of Kraft Heinz uh, Company. Anyway, so H J, that's how he called himself, started his business uh, at his mom's garden when he was eight years old in 1869, and they sold horse radish recipe not the ketchup right they started out with the horse radish and if you see look at the the uh the package you see that right there established 1869 that's when he started yeah and um the he started his uh cats up that's what his company called at the time not ketchup cats up like cat meow meow so cats up company so look at right here if you look at this bottle yeah cats up Right, in 1889 to 1894, and then they changed the name to Ketchup later. And uh, uh, later, uh, starting, uh, he started selling uh, the condiment, uh, including the tomato-based condiment, and called Ketchup. Okay, and you probably uh, have seen. I'm not sure you realize that. You see the number right here. So, uh, at Heinz, it started in 1869. That's when he started tomato ketchup. 57 varieties. 57 right here. Uh, on the left side, there's an ad in 1932. And on the right side is uh, is an ad on 1946. If you look at the 1932 one, see the 57 right there? There's a number there. Um, what is it? 57 right there. 57 is his lucky number. He was on a train, uh, some I don't know, somewhere, and he uh, just look at the, the side and say 21 variety of shoes. And he's really like, yeah, that's kind of cool. Have like that options. Um, so, and he just like the 57, and it's come into uh, like it. He was trying to say that oh he, the, the his company sell a lot of condiments but at the time he like he sell he sold over sixty condiments already but he likes fifty seven because it's a, his lucky number okay um highs uh was it as of twenty twelve yes six hundred and fifty million bottles of highs ketchup was sold worldwide not just in our country yeah highs has become a hit and so uh all internationally and uh highs is in pittsburgh you right? so his company has been in uh, pittsburgh pennsylvania in june uh 2001 the hj highs company purchased the name the naming rights to the stadium so we have Heinz field the home of pittsburgh steelers that's a football team okay and 2019 some of you probably know this guy so Heinz replicates ed sharing's ketchup tattoo that's his tattoo and uh, on a limited edition model that's pretty cool 57 right there 57 varieties that's his lucky number okay all right that's a little bit about the um uh, our sponsor. Now let's get into the detail. All right. So the reaction that you have seen so far, we have precipitation reaction, right? So put things together. If they're not soluble, you can see it right, uh, right, right here. So this one is the uh, lead iodide, which is uh, yellow in color. Now we did uh, gravi was it gravimetric analysis on on uh, this reaction. Uh, we also have an acid base reaction, right? Add an acid at a base, making salt and water. I using an indicator and change the color, right? It's from the uh, previous chapter. Combustion reaction. We have talked about combustion reaction for many, many times. Since like maybe like the first, uh, our first episode, maybe. So for the very first chapter. Um, look at right here. So uh, combustion reaction uh, re uh, has a lot of application. We can cook for entertainment, uh, for generating uh, um, the electric city right and for for fun but don't try at home take a look <laughs> so basically he put the uh like he heat up the the whatever this um 
what is it? What is it? Oh, that's an oh, that's a feel. Oh my god. Yeah. Don't, don't do that at home. Um, combustion reaction could kill people, and some people die. Actually, I, I'm I'm sure you know that. This is a regular, simple combustion reaction. Hydrogen gas react with oxygen. Oxygen gas at high heat. When heat is heated up, it produces water and produce even larger amount of heat. And this happened with uh, what's the name of? Uh, I'm gonna read right here. So the Hindenburg, which is the name of this uh, air balloon, was a hydrogen fuel airship that suffered suffer an accident upon its attempted to landing in New Jersey in 1937. That's the picture from the news. Um, their hydrogen immediately combusted a huge fireball, destroying the airship and kill and killing 36 people. The chemical reaction was simple one, uh, hydrogen combining with oxygen to produce water. Yep, that's just that reaction and people die. Okay. And uh, well, the, if you some of you remember that, so gas and any gas phase have high energy. So two high energy reactant making water one of the most uh, um, stable um, compounds ever. So high energy go to really low energy. This reaction produced a large amount of heat. Okay. All right. Next one, we have a redox reaction. We have two types of reaction that we haven't get to into the detail or haven't talked about it yet. Is one is a redox reaction. You, I have probably have mentioned uh, oxidation uh, reduction but that's pretty much it okay so this one we have magnesium strip dip into a hydrochloric acid solution and it's just a single displacement reaction so magnesium replaced hydrogen so pair up with chlorine we have magnesium chloride and you got hydrogen gas you see the bubble right there that's all hydrogen gas we can make so copper uh, wire in a silver nitrate solution I'll take a look so all right let's start off with copper wire a uh, copper wire add a silver nitrate solution and what happens? So uh, copper will replace silver, right? But <clears throat> and uh, copper, copper metal. This is the metal replace silver. So copper become in solution. So coming out from the metal in, into the solution, and silver get on the copper metal and start with all this look like snow right here. That's all silver. Okay, we're gonna talk about this reaction in a bit. But redox reaction is really really important. It allows you to carry electricity anywhere you go. Yeah, in like in like in a battery, in a car battery, or on your phone. I mean, there's just a lot of application there. So, so uh, the whole chapter of this chapter, we're gonna talk about this redox reaction. And the uh, the only reaction that I haven't mentioned yet is nuclear chemistry or nuclear reaction. So, uh, nuclear reaction are very hot field. So, and uh, in chemistry, this type of reaction can give a large amount of heat, like exceptional large amount of heat. So we can use in uh, in a power plant to produce lots amount of electricity and also use them in medicine. Okay, you have you might have probably heard about radiology, right? So that's the um, this all the field that study uh, um, uh, nuclear chemistry. Okay, but this reaction can also hurt people, and we're gonna talk about this what happened in uh, in Japan. Okay, all right, electrochemistry. So it's uh, the study of migration of electron. And this uh, associated with chemical process, or we call redox reaction. Uh, we read redox reaction. Don't 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 read it redox. No, that's not. <laughs> we have a reduction and then oxidation. That's why we call redox reaction, right? So half <clears throat> half of the redox reaction is uh, come from oxidation reaction, which is an increase in oxidation number zinc zero, right? This is the regular zinc element zinc. So that's zero uh, oxidation number zero. Go to plus two increase in oxidation number. We call oxidation reaction. And uh, copper um, to uh, receive electron become copper zero. So this we call reduction reaction or decrease in the oxidation number. Okay. So one of them lose electron, now zinc, and one of them gains electron. All right. So we call redox. There's a, these two together we call redox reaction. Uh, a combustion reaction is a type of redox reaction. Pretty much like most, I think maybe all combustion reaction are uh, a redox reaction. So because uh, Carbon, uh, carbon zero and oxygen gas also zero. Carbon loses four electron to oxygen. Okay. And from carbon plus, plus four and oxygen minus two. Right? Uh, reaction of metal and acid. So iron start out with the, me uh, metal iron. This is just, um, ele uh, elemental iron. So the oxidation is zero. Hydrogen plus one. Uh, iron loses six electron. Which I'll tell you how to calculate this later, uh, to the hydrogen. So and become plus three and hydrogen is zero. Okay. 
And uh, so the reaction uh, between metal and acid is happening right here. And also, we also have the reaction in battery cell. That's also a redox reaction. One of them loses the electron, one of them gains the electron. Okay. Now, we use the uh, oxida uh, oxidation number to guide us to keep track of electrons who lose electron, who uh, gains electron. That's why we have to talk about the oxidation number. The first thing you need to know is the how to calculate the oxidation number, okay? All right, let's talk about this on the next video.